we'll work it out. Don't don't worry. We're not going to not let you do business. Yeah, we're not shutting down. No, no, because we we are still busy, and that's really what we wanted to talk about today. Is yeah. obviously we're concerned, mm -hmm. confused, unsure, apprehensive. Uh, skeptical. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, uh, we, all the above. All the above. Everyone has all these emotions going, and they they change hours throughout the day. You can all of a sudden be worried and nervous and scared, and then oh, it's really not that big of a deal. Yeah. yeah. So you know, you hear the numbers, the cases. You're like, uh, we are not here to talk about whether or not this is going to be truly a big deal, an outbreak. Uh, we can't forecast. We don't know the predictability know. of the virus itself. Yeah, and but, what's going on in China? What's happening in Italy? Is that going to happen here? We 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 have no idea. But but so that's uncertainty. Okay, so that's uncertainty. However, with uncertainty, I have lived through a lot of uncertainty in my real estate career. Um, we have a few people in the company, uh, Greg Tiffin. Um, Geez, I'm trying to think of who, who are our long, long time agents. I mean, there's really yeah, not that many people who have been doing this for 30 years. plus like years. Like Sharon Robson. Sharon Robson, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nancy, uh, Nancy just came on. I'm not sure how long she's been in the business. She might have been in the business a while. Um, yeah, to weather some of these. Yeah, but yeah, 30 plus years in this business, I've seen a lot of uncertainty. I've seen, uh, it was the first... Gulf War, and that was in the, what, early 90s, mm -hmm. late 80s, early 90s. I mean, I started in 89, so you had the first Gulf War. And, and trust me, when there's a war, <laughs> there's a lot of uncertainty. Well, you're not knowing if this is going to go on for years. You don't know if there's going to be a draft. I mean, all these things go through people's minds. And then what's that mean to people who are getting purchases? What's that going to do to the mm -hmm. economy? Um, then we had the second Gulf War. Right. I, I mean, again, uncertainty. What's this look like? How long is this going to go on for? Obviously, we had 9-11. 9-11, yeah. I, I mean, and that that shut everything down. That left a substantial that, impact. That was... Yeah. That's, uh, probably, that's the worst that we've... Well, no, not really. I mean, that was 2001. I've experienced, I guess I should say. Well, no, 2008 and 9. Well... That was the worst... Recession, depression. Yes. 2001, yeah. 9 11 was probably the scariest, scariest thing. Yeah. The scariest thing that we saw. But again, so another uncertainty. What, what's, yeah. how's what's this going to impact? How does this we, affect life? Yeah. Uh, and then we did have the yeah. meltdown. I mean, the total meltdown. Which was the mortgage meltdown. Yeah. And so lots of uncertainty in my 30 years of doing this. Um, and I can uh, just quick snippet. I'm still here. I'm still selling real estate. Mm -hmm. we, you know, we built a company. It's different than what I did before. Stacy still sells real estate. Um, but even during those times, people still bought homes. Mm -hmm. People are still getting married. People are still upsizing, downsizing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the market always continued, even in the, the, the worst of the worst, which was 2008 yeah. and nine. which I mean, yes, that was... It was miserable. Yeah. I mean, most of our sales in 2008 and 9, whether they were short sales, people had to sell because they couldn't afford their homes. There were deaths in families, elderly parents that passed away and divorced. I mean, those were our clientele. It was heavy clientele. I mean, <laughs> it yeah. wasn't fun to do those no. sales, but there was still constantly people needing help. Yeah. So we've always done business. So if there's anyone out there going, oh my gosh. This is going to halt the real estate market. The world's going to stop. Mm -hmm. it, it, we're going to close down like we're closing down bars or restaurants and no one's going to, you know, all the purchase contracts are all going to fall apart and that's nope. not going to happen. Nope. I, I, that I can tell you for sure. Rest assured. 100%. Not happening. Now, will there be a few people that call you up and say, I'm not sure if this is a good time for me. My industry isn't looking healthy. I'm getting nervous. You bet. Uh, there, there may be uh, a, a small percentage of people out there that are looking at maybe uh, temporary having their job suspended. I won't right. even say layoffs. I mean, when yeah. you have a 3.5% uh, unemployment mm -hmm. and because of this situation, yes, 
some people might have temporary uh, suspensions. I don't even say layoffs. Yeah. We we need people so badly in our industries, whatever people are running, that they don't want to get rid of them because when this comes they're gonna roaring back, back, they're going to need them back. Yeah. And did you all see um, on the news that Amazon is looking to hire 100,000 people in order to keep up with the online demands? So maybe you're having a temporary slowdown in your industry and you hop over to Amazon to pick a few hours and then you go, there's always a little bit of give and take, but I think yeah, we're going to figure out a way to make it happen. Make it happen, for yeah. sure. So I believe this will be temporary. I mean, it's a virus. Viruses end. Now, a war, we had no idea when that was going to end. The financial crisis, I mean, that was huge. Mm -hmm. that, that, I mean, that was, that was crazy. Yeah. There was so much going on wrong in the economy at that time that, yeah, that took several years to rebound. This is a virus. Yeah. Now, this has this nothing is, to do with people over leveraging no. and getting loans that they shouldn't have been getting and stating their income as X, but not really making that much money. This has nothing to do with what happened in yeah. 2008 and 2009. So the impacts are going to be Doesn't no have risk. to do with people's interest rates readjusting. readjusting. And that was what was yeah. happening during the financial crisis. So when you hear the word recession, maybe you've been in the industry for only... 10 years mm -hmm. or even five and you hear us talk about the great recession, recession. depression, you know, and now we're hearing that maybe we'll have a recession in uh, the third quarter. I mean, we're talking Define recession. So yeah. It's a lack of growth. Lack it, of growth it, in two quarters. In two quarters. Yeah. So we hear that and some of us, me included, go back to remembering the last recession. And how long, and how long. it was. And just because we are going to possibly be in a recession does not mean we have to parallel that with the last one. I would think it would be more like the first Gulf War or the second one, which were quick and got over pretty quick. Uh, they weren't that scary for us economically. And uh, you read a stat that out of the last five recessions we had. Yeah. Three of them, um, housing actually went up. So the value of homes went up. We had a housing boom during three of the last five recessions because of the supply and the demand. And because interest rates were so low, the affordability index made it easier for buyers to get into the market. So then we didn't have enough homes and all these buyers were buying. So prices and values on housing actually went up. And so that's what we're hearing now um, from really reliable sources that the housing market is actually going to pull us through this little blip with the virus. And I, without even having read that, yeah. I would totally agree that that's what's going to happen because in the past, all the recessions that I've been through, we have never been in a state that we are now. I, I, again, we have been in this boom for what, five, six years here in Colorado, yeah, Colorado with the limited supply, the huge demand, the low interest rates, the affordability of people being able to get into homes. I mean, yes, they're expensive, but they can get into them because of, of the cost of the lower interest, the lower interest rate. rates. Mm -hmm. Their purchasing power is better. Yeah. So when we came back and roared in those three of the five recessions before, one, our average time on market was still around that five months. Mm -hmm. So we were five months average when we went into the recession and then we roared back. Interest rates back then, 6%. I would say 5 and 6%. Uh, we didn't have the demand that we do now. So I, I really think that within a couple months that this, we will we'll probably be looking back going, huh, we slowed down because we went home, we stayed in the house. Mm -hmm. Maybe we weren't calling our past clients, which this is a great time just to call and reach out, touch base with people so you're not feeling alone and they're not feeling alone. Mm -hmm. So, you, you Buffiniites, uh, the people that do business by referral, great time just to talk to your past clients, your friends, your family. I don't care if it's through Facebook, on the phone, yep. text messaging, writing notes. Stay connected so that you're not locked up in your house feeling like it's the end of the world because it's going to pass pretty it's quick. Going to pass. And then we're going to look back and go, huh, remember 2020 when yeah. we had the coronavirus? Yeah. And so I, I, I truly it's think just a little hiccup. It's, it's a hiccup, but we'll, we'll feel it. Yeah. I mean, you will feel it. Uh, people that don't have to buy right now, they probably won't. They'll, They'll probably just write it out and go, eh, let's see what happens. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, 
But people that are currently under contract, I think they're going to be fine. Yeah. People that uh, have been looking for months and months and you show them that there's a new listing and there are new listings. I mean, we are seeing them every day. Oh. Diane Mueller just posted on Facebook. So please, everybody, post as much success success so that we know that you're out there working so we know that you're talking to people yeah and uh just a little segue on that um i monitor all of the purchase contracts that you guys generate from ct or ctm um just part of our overseeing brokerage responsibilities and we've had 21 purchase contracts generated by agents in our dtc office in the last four days so did you all hear that 21, 21 contracts <laughs> written the last four days. Yeah. We're still selling homes. Yeah. And people that have been looking for a long time and something comes new on the market, I mean, people still have to sell. Maybe they're getting relocated. Uh, maybe they you know, have finally decided it's a it's good time to buy. The interest rates are so good. Yeah. So they're going to put their house on the market to take advantage of the great interest rates. Um, we are seeing people actually move from Colorado, which we haven't mm -hmm. seen for a while. Yeah. I, I think some people have said, you know what, we're going to cash out. It's done really well here. We've been thinking about retiring somewhere. So they're putting their homes on the market. So there is definitely business going on. And the more you guys share with us, uh, just to help your fellow agent know that you're busy out there. You're still doing stuff. We will do it ourselves through watching CTM. Uh, we'll keep you guys updated like every few days because I know everyone yeah. wants information right now. No news is scary. Yeah. Like you'd rather hear something rather than nothing. So yeah, we'll try and deliver as much as we can just to build your confidence. But really put your blinders on and get to work. Keep reaching out to your clients. Keep doing your prospecting. Keep sending your note cards. Keep doing your newsletters. Work on some of your technology things, your backend processes yep. and systems while you're sitting at home and really get ready for a strong selling season. It'll be interesting to see if this will help fuel our summer selling season. Yeah. Typically summer slows down, but if there are a few buyers that might be on the fence right now, they might be waiting to make a purchase in that July August, September timeframe, and it could end up lengthening our prime selling season. So truly, I just want to read some of these comments to you guys oh, in case yeah. you're not watching these, but Kiefer right here, three deals under contract this weekend, two listings next week, and those two clients are buying. Yeah, Kiefer, we were actually talking about you this morning because yeah. when I was going through counting how many purchase contracts were written, I was like, Kiefer wrote another one. Kiefer wrote one on Saturday. He wrote one on Sunday. He wrote one yesterday. So yeah, that's that's awesome. So Irene, great great question. Are you still showing homes to clients right now? Yes. Yes. So social distancing. We, we posted uh, NAR's recommendations. Should you do open houses? Should you still? Yes, you should still be working. Mm -hmm. But keep your hands clean. Yeah. Maybe drive in separate cars. cars. If you're, you know, if you're not a family member, have them follow you. And frankly, I like doing that anyway. I know better. The best sales technique is to put them in the car, and then you can talk and everything. I always like to listen to my music, drive to their to the property, have them meet me. Yeah. That was how I did business. But now, do it that way too. And when you show the home, sure, ask people to be. You know, respectful of someone's home and don't just go touching everything and freaking mm -hmm. people out. But if you really look at the numbers that are going on right now, it's not like it's one out of two people have the coronavirus. It's, mm -hmm. it's a very limited amount. And by keeping us away from being in large gatherings, we keep that one person who might have it out of thousands from yeah. infecting those people. But if it's a one-on-one -on -one situation... Follow me. We'll meet there. I'll open it up. Let's just keep our distance and be respectful of each other. But yeah. I would keep showing, keep showing properties. Houses. Yeah, absolutely. And then, I mean, if you're one of the fortunate few that got your hands on hand sanitizer or Lysol wipes, just bring those so that when you're done touching doorknobs and light switches, you can kind of wash your hands before you get into your car and you're good to go. So, yeah, you know, and I might even make like a little checklist of these are the things that I'm going to ask buyers agents to do when previewing your home and come up with a little checklist and you mm -hmm. can leave it you know on the counter that says you know please do not open up all my cupboards you know please you know and, and leave a little Lysol I mean we do have Lysol the stores do They're have restocked. it we're not yeah. we're not out of stuff <laughs> but come up with a little marketing piece mm -hmm. that, that makes your sellers feel good about having people come in their home and exactly yeah, yeah. Uh, open houses 
I probably wouldn't be doing open houses right now unless you have a vacant property because if you have a family of five and you say, you're, I'm going to have an open house this weekend, let 30 people come through it, I, I'm guessing that's going to make them feel weird. You know, it, it's going to be really hard to watch everyone and make sure that, and again, I'm sure they'd be fine, yeah. but it'd make them feel weird. And open houses, as we pretty much know, that's a great way for us to generate leads, mm -hmm. but it's not the best way to sell, sell that, that house. house. But yeah, I mean, have a discussion with your client, let them know the pros and cons. And if they're adamant about you holding the home open, absolutely go for it. But if you can avoid it, you know, just let them know that you're putting their safety first and you'd rather not have 30 strangers walking through their home, touching light switches and doorknobs. Um, but, you know, protect them. Definitely. Have that discussion. So. so again, thanks for sharing what you guys are doing. Irene has three buyers, mm. has a listing next week. Nice. Uh, Rocio doing virtual open house on Facebook Live. That's perfect. How cool is that? Yeah. Utilize technology and video, a virtual open house. Yeah. What a great idea. Go on live like we're doing right now, but take your phone and say, Tour. here's the house. What? A, and yeah. then it's saved. People can go. They can look. I think it's more fun than a virtual tour because it's you it's, talking. Yeah, interactive. You can tell them about the perks of the house. I love that. Rocio, great idea. Uh, JB just got a motivated buyer call this morning uh, due to interest rates. Yeah, and interest rates are, are extremely good, but they're kind of crazy right now. They're jumping up and down. Yeah, really volatile. They're volatile. <laughs> Very. And it, it's, you would think because the Fed lowers the rate that everybody gets to participate in the lower rate, and it doesn't always work yeah. that way. Mm -hmm. The banks have the lower rate, but what they offer to the consumer is different uh, based upon supply and demand. Yeah. And right now the demand, the demand is, is so high. high. Mortgage companies are so busy right now. Yeah, they're slammed. They're slammed. So yeah, we are going to kind of see those interest rates tick up and down uh, on a daily basis. So Nancy, uh, yes, I haven't watched Scott's video yet. Um, I want to watch it. So Scott, is it Peterson? We're talking Peterson, about? Peterson, okay. yeah, uh, with Car of Legal Bites and. Uh, if you go to our Facebook page, or I mean our YouTube page, YouTube page, and you can get to our YouTube page either through Elevate, just click on the YouTube channel, or we have it posted here on Facebook. Um, down, you can scroll down for it. But if you go to that, we do have the car um, YouTube channel listed there, mm -hmm. so you can go there. But so Scott Peterson just did a, a great uh, legal bite uh, that walked through both seller side and buyer side. Uh, highly recommend it. So take take a look at it. Yeah, Perfect. Scott always does a good job and he's fun. Yeah, and what we'll do is um, we'll link that into our weekly update for next Monday. So yeah. yeah. Then we'll have it for you guys to watch. So where are we at? I think what we wanted to really let you guys know is, yes, it's okay to have the feelings we're all having. Mm -hmm. that, that is part of being human and we are like this. But it's also important to remember, keep moving forward. We will get through this. And those who get through this on the other side in a successful manner, are those who are going to be able to in the morning or in the evening, take a little time for yourself and go, oh my God, this is kind of crazy. This is kind of scary. And then put that aside mm -hmm. and get back to work. Yep. Because we can't allow the weather, uh, the economy, uh, what's going on in the, in the big world affect what happens to us on a daily basis. Yeah. We're the only ones that can, you know, affect what we do on a daily basis. Cause there's always uncertainty. Something. There's yeah. always something And if, if you just zero in on that scary thing that's happening at that moment, which there's always something that we can find that's. Yeah. And you know, I think our buyers are going to be, and our sellers are going to be looking to us to take the lead. And if we all go running around with our heads cut off, like chickens screaming that this is the next recession and we're not going to come out of it for nine years, they're all going to have that same fear. So yeah, let's not make up fear that doesn't exist. Let's, like you said, identify it in the morning or at night and then move forward and help those that need your help. Yeah. It's okay to acknowledge that you're yeah. fearful or whatever the feeling is. It's great. Now get back to it. And as Paul just said, yeah, where are my Buffini peeps at? Win the day. Yeah. Two okay. hours per day, four days per week. That's all it takes to stay focused. And yeah, yeah we need to stay focused because all of us have bills have dreams, have things that we want to achieve. 
And we do that by helping others achieve what they want to achieve. And it's your job to help your friends, your family, your sphere get what they want. And what better time to help them get what they want than maybe there is just a small dip in the demand. Maybe there's a few people that are like, I'm not going to go do anything. Well, great. That gives you an opportunity to get into that house and actually get it because we're still seeing, seeing these multiple, multiple offers. offers. So maybe you'll be fortunate that you won't have a multiple offer that you go up against, or maybe there's only three instead of 10. So let this little window be an advantage for your clients. I definitely wouldn't be saying, let's wait and see if we have a dip in values and prices. I That's do not, not, see that. not in the Denver market. <laughs> there Denver. might be somewhere on another state that is going to have that happen, but Denver, nope. Prices right. are not going to fluctuate whatsoever because yeah, of this. I'm, yeah. I mean, there's not a lot of things I know for sure, but I would put 99% on. That's not happening. We just have too much demand. Yeah. Too much demand. So even if we lost 10 or 20% of the buyer market, we still have too, too much, much demand. demand. Which is so, a good place to be in. Yeah. So that's a great place. Yeah. What other questions do we have here? Yeah. I think we've beaten that to... Yeah. Yeah. I, again, sorry about this. It's crazy. It's yeah, it's on weird. everybody's minds. I mean, you can't yeah. turn on the TV or open up your computer without seeing it or getting an email from some company that you didn't even know you subscribed to. I'm getting all sorts of emails on how we're handling, you know, coronavirus. It's like, okay, okay. Yeah. We got it. And, and yeah, Beth, great. Got some repairs that have to be done on a property. Yeah. You allow someone in to come and, and take care of those repairs. I mean, you're, you're going to have to really evaluate what you truly think the risk is of having a person in your mm -hmm. home in a one particular area. I mean, this is not polio. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, yeah. it's not polio, but if this is a 90 year old person who has emphysema and don't let anyone in their house, I'm not coming in. Me, I get a, a plumbing leak in my house. I need a plumber. Bringing in a contractor. I need Just to get that sure fixed. Just make sure he's not like coughing and sneezing and his eyes are all watery. And you know, maybe you go through and you wipe things down after he leaves. Yeah. Some common sense. Yeah. Definitely. Some common sense yeah. for sure. That's good. Here's Irene. That's a good one. Um, do you think that problems may occur with closing of timing issues? Should timeline be adjusted in any way? That comes up to the buyers and the sellers. Yeah. I mean, you have a contract. So the seller can keep the buyer to the contract and keep moving through with the dates. I don't know why somebody would need to adjust these. Yeah, we're, in, I mean, mortgage companies are busy, but they're not having any trouble meeting the regular 30 day timelines. Um, inspectors are actually slammed right now. Um, I just heard that there was a, one of our inspectors had six home inspections scheduled just yesterday wow. for next week. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's going to, it's your normal, you know, you need time for inspections, you need time for appraisals, but people aren't putting a hold on inspections or a hold on appraisals because they're afraid to go into homes. So there aren't any delays that we're seeing as of right now, that's going to lengthen your timeline and cause you to delay a closing other than a buyer saying, I'm a little bit scared. Can we push this out a couple of weeks? And then that's just part of the negotiation process. But I'm not seeing any companies, title companies, anybody saying we can't handle the load because we're all working remotely. No. Obviously, if they're getting laid off mm -hmm. or losing their job, then you have a you know, loan conditions uh, deadline that you could exercise, exercise potentially. Yeah. So uh, the concern is also for sellers who need... Oh, yeah, I read that one. I'm confused. On Ari Colorado, the prices are declining on the zip codes I'm watching. I don't know what zip codes you're watching and when you're looking at prices. I mean, we haven't had any real purchases that could be tracked during the coronavirus yet. Right, because I mean, everything's that, now moving forward. So yes. we'll see the statistics next month and the following month. Right. So so if you saw if you've seen prices declining, it's not due to coronavirus yet because we haven't we haven't been in this long enough. Uh, you might see some prices declining. Uh, year over year, which I have not seen that. So. Yeah. And on the hot sheets on RA Colorado, I mean, just a statistic for you. Um, last December, January, I was tracking prices because a lot of sellers and realtors got very ambitious coming into the new year with pricing. And 20% of the listings that hit the market in January and December of last year had a price reduction before they made it to the closing table. And that was purely because realtors said, well, let's throw this price on it. There's so many buyers out there. There's very few competition as far as listings. And let's see 
if we can get it. So that's still kind of what's going on is realtors are encouraging their clients to hit the market just a little bit high to kind of feel things out. And these price reductions have been taking place month over month over month um, since late last year. And again, that was a 20% of every of all listings that hit the market in those two months ended up having a price reduction that had nothing to do with right. coronavirus or anything. So yeah, I'd be curious to see what numbers you're really looking at there, Beth. Um, yeah, is it list price versus sales price or mm -hmm. is it year over year pricing? But again, this is too soon to know what it's going to do on prices because we couldn't have written an offer during the crisis already and closed already. I mean, yeah, so it's only been a couple of weeks. Yeah. So. But uh, we'll keep a tab on that. Yeah, keep a tab. Uh, Kevin, COVID is airborne and can remain in the air for several hours. Um, possibly. Uh, again, I'm not a corona expert, virus expert. I am saying would I allow one person into my house mm -hmm. who seems to be healthy to go work in uh, the downstairs bathroom and fix my plumbing. Yeah, I would. You have to uh, assume what risk tolerance you're able to take or your client's able to take. But yeah, um, it's definitely airborne. And according to the CDC, it can last on surfaces from four to nine days. And then you got to take into account sunlight and ultraviolet light and cleaning supplies. And I mean, there's a lot of things that get factored into that. So yeah, you got to look at your risk. I mean, we've gone from... No gatherings of 500 to gatherings of 250 to gatherings of 10. 10. Uh, you know, it's, it's all over the place. It's up to your sellers or yourself, personal yeah. idea of what you think the risk is. Mm -hmm. So, um, And it's funny that we don't have more of these conversations during like the regular flu season because yes. it's all very applicable. Yes. Yes. It, it's mean, very <laughs> applicable. Again, I'm not going to talk about how bad it could be and what, what could happen to you. But yeah, uh, the odds of someone getting you the flu is much greater um, normally, and we're not that mm -hmm. panicked about who's walking into my house. Now this is very yeah. top of mind, and so everyone has to look at what the risk is. Yeah, Nancy Madonna made a good point. She said she talked to Exodus Moving and Storage, um, the owners yesterday, and they have terrific protocols in place and making moves. Um, so yeah, that hasn't been changed except for assisted living facilities. They're not doing the moves there. Yeah. So. Yes, I agree, Kevin. Now, so when I when I said my risk tolerance is allow a plumber into my, you bet I'm going in there then if we're spraying oh, it. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah I, mean, I might not even go in there for three days. <laughs> so you got to look at your, your again your risk tolerance. But yeah, I, I it's not like I'm gonna lend somebody in my house. And we actually had someone in our house the other day and. Uh, didn't shake his hand and you know did a little elbow thing we kind of stayed away from the gentleman and yeah. then when he left it, we're up we wiped there everything wiped down. everything down yeah i mean so. when i'm in public i'm not gonna lie i carry a hand sanitizer in my pocket and i probably use it four times without touching anything i'm just like my hands feel dirty my hands feel dirty my hand and then i'm yeah. wiping down my phone and i'm wiping i'm cleaning my bottle of hand sanitizer i mean there's yeah we just yeah. we're being very cautious so We'll look into that, Beth. That I do not see any panic. I do not see any panic in selling. Oh, no. Uh -uh. No. Nope. nope. There aren't any fire sales. There aren't any sellers going, oh, my gosh, I got to get out right now. No. no. We're not seeing we not any seeing that. of that. No, we will no. investigate those numbers for you, though, and get you the, the stats. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, we are not seeing panic in the real estate market. Nope. The only panic we're seeing is people trying to take advantage of what they think are great interest rates and they're not great great yet because there's so many people trying to take advantage of right. them. Right. No, so. the only panic out there is all the toilet paper being yeah. purchased. <laughs> uh, would you wait to list after spring break? Great question. I'm not selling my house. I have no idea. It always depends what somebody's circumstances are. Yeah. What? Why are they selling? What are they, they doing? What's their time frame? So, um, if they're not in a rush, I'd, I'd like to sell someday, I might wait just because it's probably not going to be that busy right now. But then again, you might not get that many people through my house and the people that come through my house this time of year serious. are going to be really serious. So yeah, in past years, they've said, I've always said, don't list during spring break because people are traveling. Kids are out of school. And so they're taking spring break vacations. Um, there's not a ton of traveling going on with most families right now. So they're all hunkered down. Um, 
Again, I think the people that are looking for a home are going to be the serious ones and you're not going to get a lot of tire kickers, like you said. So it might actually be a good time to list because maybe not everybody else is going to list because they're going to wait. And so we're going to have this influx of listings come on the market in April and May and maybe you can beat everyone to the punch. So my recommendations in the past were don't list spring break, wait to either before or after, but this year I think it's totally different. So yeah. based upon your client circumstances, if they're trying to transition into another home, factor in the timing for that. Uh, let's see. Inspections, uh, Don. Inspection set for next week. Buyer's agent and I agree to limit the number of attendees to only the necessary. Providing latex gloves, shoe booties, just to be safe as possible. Love it. Yeah. Great idea. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's... And maybe you do that for showings. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe you let the, the listing agent know. I mean, the more we work together, one, we've always talked about having a good reputation in this industry means a lot. Yeah. It means, you know, people want to work with you. When there's a competitive offer, they might go, oh, I really like Dawn. She's very, you know, proactive. And, and during the, uh, the virus outbreak and, and she did these things, maybe you actually communicate that to listings and say, hey, I would like to show your property. I want to let you know what our protocol is now. I now su- supply my buyers with latex gloves. We bring along. I've asked them not to ch- give a yeah. little. And they're like, oh, wow, that agent's really on top of it. Sure. One, maybe I should do that too. But you bring an offer in a competitive market. Maybe they've got two offers and they're going to go, that Don, mm-hmm. she was really respectful. I bet she'd be good to work with. I, I like that. Absolutely. That's smart. Yeah. Let's see. Make sure we didn't miss anyone. You guys were typing a lot of things. Oh, Vicki, I know Heritage Time was looking to have electronic signatures for closing, but since they need to watch people sign, they're considering doing it through FaceTime or some type of video meeting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. On that, uh, we actually, a little uh, self-promo for Amir and Own Home Loans, we actually do have the ability to do e-signatures remote closings without anyone there and we've already had this system already in place where the actual closer is online through our special system that's not facetime it's not your phone but it's integrated into our software package where you can sit and close and they will see you sign and they can notarize it and you're not even even there that's kind of cool that's pretty cool we haven't really been pushing it because um well, I, frankly, we're pretty busy, and yeah. and uh, you know, Amir. We appreciate your referrals. yeah, we appreciate Thank it. Amir's just trying to do a stellar job, and yeah. you know, we're trying to do a a smooth ramp up with this company, and, and not have uh, hiccups that you guys notice. Uh, of course, on the back end, you know, he's There's scrambling and making things. sure everything's perfect. But we do have this technology That's already cool. in place. So, so yeah, if you have yeah. a client that really needs that, let yeah. us know. Send them to get along with own um but that's cool that heritage i hadn't heard that heritage did that that's really cool uh let's see anything else in here see we're all gonna get so comfortable at working remotely and through video conferencing and through e-signing and who knows what this will create how do you think this will affect new bills i have two under contract in those and one is waiting to list to coordinate with completion um that's a great question i haven't heard anything about People not continuing to work on new builds. There's yeah. a new build that's going on just up the road from our house. And I see them out every day so working. The one caveat I would have to that is if the county building department oh. closes and yes. they can't get permits or inspections. But workers, workers are still on site. And yeah, they're the construction managers are all still working. But if the county departments close down yep. or start working remotely, they can't push the files through as quickly and so inspections might slow and that could maybe affect construction i haven't heard of it but just kind of a little something to be proactive and and foresee down the road so So yeah i bet uh yeah thanks ashley yeah that's why they're being vague is because we haven't heard what the counties are doing and every they don't have control over that yeah every county is different not all of them are closing down as of right now douglas county is open denver county is open jefferson county building departments are open yeah so open and working meaning they're still issuing permits they're still going out um i think if they close them i think it's gonna be short i mean if you look at what we've done here in the state with uh the restaurants and hospitality um governors closed them down for 30 days but federally nationally 
they've only done some things for 15 days. Yeah. So, you know, if they shut down the, the county for a couple of weeks, then, you know, we're going to be probably backlogged uh, two, three weeks. So I, I, I don't, yeah. it's not going to throw us off months. And I think what will end up happening is they're going to separate the people that work in that department and whether they can work remotely. They're just not going to let the general public come in so that they can keep people in small areas individually but i think they're going to be still sending inspectors out to job sites to make sure that the construction process is moving forward because they're not interacting with anyone they're just looking at the product where it is in that stage of construction saying yes you passed or no you didn't yeah. so i think the way they're going to do business is just a little bit differently and it might slow down the um how rapidly they can push out those inspections and permits but i don't think it's going to get locked down and, and no. stopped no i don't so, know but great question yeah we don't get to see you guys, but I'm glad you guys are interacting with us uh, online and typing. We're still here. We're still working. Uh, Zoom is awesome. I love doing Zoom. So if you want to face-to-face -face talk about something, uh, more than happy to do that. And yeah, Nancy uh, mentioned earlier, yeah, it's, it's great that our company was set up to be able to do business from anywhere. Yeah. You know, So uh, obviously in a situation like this, it's perfect. But just on a day-to-day -day basis, um, you know, we're we're all over the place nowadays. So yeah. uh, we're we're set. 